I'm Dex, I'm a senior product manager here at Replicated. Um, we've got Marielle as well, who is, um, do you want to say it? It's a long title. <laughs> oh, you're muted. Classic. Um, I'm Marielle. Um, I've got a background in customer success and I spent a, a good amount of time working closely with our software vendors. And uh, recently I moved into um, marketing. So I'm a senior marketing manager now. Wonderful. Um, cool. So kick things off. Um, I think the, the big thing is people are measuring a lot of things these days. Um, let's switch the tabs up real quick. Okay, here we go. People are measuring a lot of stuff these days, um, especially in SaaS. Um, metrics and, and observability is kind of core to a lot of people, how people run their businesses. Um, and it gets into something that um, I think a lot of people have referred to as, uh, uh, you know, when you get strategic about this, we call this kind of the gap model of looking at, you know, being able to say, okay, this thing is bad or it's not good enough. Taking that to a data-driven conversation. Where are you now? Where do you want to be? What's the gap and how can you measure it? So that'll be on the next slide. And then um, I think it's, it's really hard to make good decisions without good data. And a lot of ISVs, people shipping into customer environments, don't have anywhere near the quality of data that um, that SaaS companies have had historically. So um, when you go into the customer hosted world, it's really, it's the wild west, folks. Uh, there's not a lot of rules. There's not a lot of kind of best practices here. Um, we did talk on the last Replicon with the GitLab folks, um, and they talk about what they really like to measure and how they define excellence and quality of their on-prem delivered uh, software product, their, their, their customer hosted GitLab Enterprise. Uh, and so we built some of that into our product so you can work just like the best. And we're gonna talk about all 16 of these kind of key metrics. In reality, you should probably pick your top three, your top five, and make sure that those are ones that your team is aware of. Um, we've seen different people take these in different directions, but the goal is, you know, find areas where you're challenged or where your customers are challenged, find the bottleneck and use these to make better decisions and to drive towards uh, a better product, a better customer experience uh, and, uh, and, and meeting your goals. And with that, I will hand it over to Mariel um, for her take, and then we'll jump right into these uh, 16 metrics. Yeah, thanks, Dex. Um, so yeah, we've added visibility into these metrics because you can't improve what you can't measure. Um, our hope is that you as a software vendor identify some of this data as a critical part of measuring the ease of use and success of the software that you distribute. Um, so let's dive right into our first category. <laughs> um, installation. Um, so this is getting software up and running in a customer environment. And a common number one thing that software vendors care about is going from when you first intend to deploy to a customer uh, to when your software is up and running in that customer's environment and is delivering value. Uh, so the installation process has a lot of steps. So we won't go into too much detail today, but this is an example of some of these steps that go into an installation before you get your software up and running in a staging environment or proof of value environment prior to getting it up and running in production and delivering value. As most, if not all of you know, um, sometimes things don't go as planned during an installation. Um, things can go sideways and you end up having to start over with a new server. Looking at that cumulative flow and measuring the ratio of the completed versus failed installation attempts is what we call install success rate. Uh, this is the percentage of your installation attempts that result in running software that's delivering value in a customer environment. And we see um, top performers at about a 90% install success rate. And some folks also think about this as attempts per install, um, which would be 1.1 attempts per install for best in class. And now I'll hand it over to Dex. Cool. Thanks, Marielle. So in addition to whether or not you were successful on the first attempt or the fourth attempt, um, it's also helpful to know how long did it take to get that up and running? Because maybe it's one attempt, but it takes you six months. That's, that's a really hard way to run a business. So there's a couple different flavors of what we call time to install here. The first one uh, is what we'll call kind of instance time to install. This is one server or one Kubernetes namespace hitting enter on the command line, how fast until your software is up and running in the customer environment. They may run multiple instances of your software. So for any one customer, they will be sort of a statistical distribution. Maybe it's staging and prod, maybe it's east and west. Um, so you might look at minimum, maximum, median of this number. 
Um, the other one is going from that sort of intent to deploy all the way through to software up and running. In, in Replicated, we think of that as like when a license is created as the uh, declaration of intent to deploy, but you can measure the start, the start the stopwatch whenever you want. But this is someone signs a contract or signs up for a trial, how fast can they get up and running from there? Uh, and then the last one is um, kind of a, a somewhere in between, um, you know, it would call it true time to install. Um, and it's capturing that time from that first instance install attempt. Even if that instance is thrown away or that namespace gets thrown away, uh, trying to capture all of the hands-on effort trying to get something up and running. So there's three options. Uh, again, we don't have a preference. It's good to measure all three of them across your customer base, um, but that's kind of the core of time to install. So whichever one you use, um, they're all kind of, you'll end up with this distribution of, of, of times to install. So you can see here's an example of a histogram of like last 90 days versus the previous quarter. And you can see we have more in the two to four, four to eight hour range and less in the one to two, two to three days range. A lot of folks look at the 80th percentile here and, and best in class will, will look something like two hours is the time to install for 80% uh, or more of your, of your users. Um, that's installation. Getting into adoption is another kind of family of metrics that we think is really important here. We see a lot of people measuring. Here's a standard adoption chart that just is showing sort of on a given date how many customers are running each uh, version of your software. And you see the newer versions coming down at the right. Um, so the first one we look at here is generally just called adoption rate. Um, a lot of folks talk about measuring the percent of folks on the last three versions. Um, but I've also seen this as last two versions or last version. It really depends on your release cadence, what you care about. If you're releasing once a year, you probably care more about last version than uh, that whole picture of the last three. Um, and best in class here again is around 80%. And uh, what's next? Age of deployed software. Mary, I'll take it away. And so another way to look at the same set of data is by the age of the software you have deployed in the field. Um, so this metric is most often measured in terms of mean or median age of deployed software, um, for which the best in class is 60 days. Um, you can also monitor the absolute age to help keep track of when older versions no longer need to be supported. And then the last adoption metric that we'll look into is unique deployed versions or the number of different versions your customers are running in production. This metric helps you know how many different versions your support team needs to be familiar with in order to support active instances in the field. And the, the more unique versions you have, the harder they become to support effectively. And then I'll hand it back to Dex to talk about velocity. Velocity. Um leading off of some of kind of the key um, DevOps research and analysis, Dora metrics, if you're familiar with Accelerate, um, how often are you shipping? Are you shipping small batches? These are generally tied to software delivery performance, no matter how big your team is or no matter how big you're doing it. Um, but the first, the first kind of flavor of velocity measurement we look at is what we'll call deployment frequency. This is a classic, um, you're probably familiar with it um, from books like Accelerate. Um, how often are releases made to customers? The difference here is uh, in a SaaS world, you may be able to deploy 100 times a day. It's probably not reasonable to ship 100 on-prem releases a day today. So uh, your expectations are probably going to be different, but the measurement is the same as how often are you shipping new versions and, and kind of be on, on the inverse, how big are those versions? We see a lot of best-in-class vendors trying to ship at least once a month. Um, and I'll pass back to Mariel for the SaaS side of the equation. Yeah, so if you're a software vendor who delivers through both SaaS and on-prem, you'll want to consider your velocity between those two releases and how long your on-prem customers have to wait after a SaaS release to gain access to those same features. Um, so that, that feature lag between SaaS and on-prem is how fast you're able to give your on-prem customers the value of your rapidly iterating SaaS features. Um, and that's a core indicator of product and value velocity. Um, so we see, we see the best in class at about one week um, between those two. And then back to Dex on reliability. All right. So reliability, um, generally, uh, we don't want to overcomplicate this. Um, we'll look at things like uptime, downtime, and perhaps degraded states, and just be able to kind of use some simple visualizations to understand, uh, sort of what proportion of an instance's lifetime has the app been up and ready and serving traffic. Um, the first kind of model for this is what we call what I'll call like aggregate uptime, which is taking the entire lifetime of each instance 
and then um, using that as the denominator. And then as the numerator, you have the amount of time that all your instances were up and running. Um, so in this case, we have one very long lived instance and two shorter lived instances. Um, and we're kind of kind of sum up all of the time across all of them. Um, so that's the first kind of way to measure this is aggregate uptime. And this one is interesting. Um, it, the, 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 the downside here is there's a risk of over indexing on the performance of a longer lived instance. As you can see, the, one of these instances has a 33.3% individual uptime, but that the overall still comes out to about 95%. And then the other, the other way to measure this is kind of looking at the individual instance uptimes and then aggregating or summarizing across those. So you can see in this case that uh, low performing instance is having a big effect on the mean, bringing it all the way down to 75%, whereas before we were looking at something like I think 95%. Um, so that's the other side of, of uptime. Um, I don't think that there's a right answer here. Um, of course, this one has a risk of over-indexing on shorter lived instances. Uh, the real answer is be interested to see y'all out there, uh, look at both of these and see what the relationships are and see what, what, what story the data tells. That's, um, that's, that's, that's the real ask here. Um, and then the last piece of reliability is, uh, I'll hand it over to Barrio for upgrade success rate. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so this is a, a high level overview of how complex upgrades are, um, which shows you just how impactful it can be to know what your upgrade success rate is. Um, and so upgrade success rates, the percentage of attempts that complete um, of upgrade attempts that complete without downtime or manual intervention. Um, if you're focusing on other metrics like adoption rate and you're investing in upgrade stability, you should see a high upgrade success rate close to that 99%. And our next metric comes straight from those DORA metrics, um, which is mean time to recover. Um, so this is when something goes wrong. Um, this is the metric that measures how long it takes you to resolve it or for your customers to self-resolve. Um, and things like improving your diagnostic tooling um, and internal documentation can really help you improve your mean time to recover. And this is also closely related to the mean time between failures, um, which Dex will talk more about. Fantastic. You can measure your recovery time. You can measure the rate of uh, change failures or upgrade failures, but we find a lot, especially in on-prem delivery. This doesn't come up in SaaS as much because you're constantly changing things, but if a server is going to sit for months at a time with nobody touching it, uh, you might still have a disk fill up or a noisy neighbor or a network gets saturated. And what's important is building resilience into your application, whether it's alerting or what. Um, but mean time between failures is a really other interesting, interesting measure that you don't see as much in the SaaS world, but um, we kind of see much more, much more valuable in the on-prem world. And uh, the last part I'm very excited about, Mario's going to talk about support burden um, using some ideas and metrics that we use internally at Replicated to, to track. Yeah, so support burden is impacted by almost all of the other metrics. Um, so as you improve in other areas, your support team will likely see a positive impact. Um, but the number of hours you spend supporting customers will also increase as the number of your customers increases. Um, so it's important to um, look at support hours per active instance um, so you don't see your business growth as having a negative impact as you scale. Um, and then you can also look at um, support burden as the number of cases that are opened um, for supporting customers, which this is, this is actually our data. Um, so this is data that we look at at Replicated all the time. Um, and reducing support burden in general um, will also help free up your engineers to allow them to spend um, more time developing new features, um, working on projects, and adding value in other areas. Um, and then back to Dex to kick off revenue metrics. Great. Thanks, Mario. So revenue is an interesting category because it tends to be a little bit more of those trailing metrics, but they're also interesting to look at um, because they have a more direct correlation to the actual performance of your business. So they don't get talked as much about as far as like individual team performances. Um, but the first one, things like trial conversion rate, obviously uh, being able to install easily and quickly isn't the only thing that converts trials. Um, but uh, if your install process is really painful, then uh, it's probably going to impact your trial conversion rate. So you can see this kind of is a trailing indicator that comes after. This is a chart that just kind of shows you um, after a certain number of days, how likely is it that a customer is to have completed their install? And then how likely is it uh, for them to have converted to paid? Um, so that's the first one. I think best in class here, you can talk about product market fit and trial conversion. There's a lot of other factors that go into trial conversion rate. 
but it is definitely impacted by your ease and speed of installation and the customer's experience when doing so. So it's worth tracking as an indicator for uh, the performance of your on-prem team. And uh, back to Mario for the last one. Yeah, so our final metric is customer instance churn. Um, so folks often talk about gross instance retention, which is the percentage of instances that were active at the start of a given time period and are still active. Um, so customer instance churn is the opposite of that. So the percentage of instances that are no longer active. Um, and we like to see the churn be at less than 5%, but this does depend on the length of time that you're measuring this. Yeah. Um, and now it's time for metric madness. Um, so we put the 16 metrics that we just talked about in a bracket, and we've been holding polls on LinkedIn over the last two weeks um, to help us identify the top eight. Um, so here are the winners. I'm going to use the poll. And then here's the winners of our um, of our top eight that made it into the Elite Eight. Um, and now we're going to have them face off in a live poll to identify the final four. And over to you, Jax. Oh, wow. Did somebody say live poll? Did somebody say live bracket? I don't know if I'm fully prepared for this, folks. Wow. Oh, wow. Look at that. Is that a, is that a hat? Is that a referee outfit we got? Wow. I did not get ready for this at all. Folks, I hope you're ready. You voted on LinkedIn for your favorite metrics. And now tonight we are going to find out who the winner is. I can't see the screen. Here we go. All right, the first round. Marielle, please bring up the first contestants. Hailing from Team Reliability, you can get it up and running, but how reliably can you keep it up to date? The undisputed champion of day two reliability, coming off of a 76% victory in the round of 16 and touting a 99% best in class value. It's upgrade success rate. And our newcomer from Team Adoption, Coming off a narrow upset beating age of deployed software by a 6% margin, it's your favorite adoption underdog. Support, team lo support teams love keeping this metric in check. Give it up for unique deployed versions. Marielle, let's get a poll. We're going to find out which of these metrics is going to win tonight. All right, the poll is live. I don't know about you all, but I'm on the edge of my seats, folks. All right, we have 36 votes in. And I think it's time to call this one. Give it up, y'all, for upgrade success rate with a whopping 83% of the vote share. Incredible, incredible outcome. Who could have seen that coming? Marielle, let's bring up the next round. Another challenger from veteran team reliability. It's been kicking around the guts of hardware engineering for well over 30 years. It doesn't matter who changed it. How often does it fail? Give it up for mean time between failures. And coming off a 58-42 victory against the incumbent, deployment frequency. Who said sales and revenue can't hang in the product metrics club? Not I. Standing a menacing six foot 10, 250 pounds. Give it up for customer instance churn. Marielle, let's find out who's gonna take this round. I. I can't call this one. It's going to be too close. And with 44 votes in, it's still too close to call. Customer instance churn taking a, a slight lead, but meantime between failures, just behind. Twenty-five, twenty-four. They're neck and neck, folks. Fifty votes.
What a nail biter here. 52, 53. It's too close. I want to see votes from everybody in the room. All right, should we cut it off in, in 30 seconds, five seconds? By the narrowest margin we thought we would see today, I got to give it to customer instance churn, winning 28 votes to 25. Revenue takes a big W, the newcomer on the scene. And we go live to the floor for a word from one of our fans. Aaron, that was an incredible result. Oh man, can we get Aaron on stage? It's, it's come to my attention that Aaron cannot be reached for comment at this time. We'll see if we can get him later. Mario, let's bring up the next set of contestants. Now, from team installation, nobody likes a failed install, folks. An install success rate is here to prove it. Unheard of in the SaaS world, install success rate is one of the oldest metrics in the book for on-prem. Coming off a 62-38 win against Instance Uptime in the round of 16, it's install success rate. And in the adoption corner, touted by the best in the business as the product metrics for customer-hosted applications, the unilateral favorite to bring home the gold in the entire tournament this year. It's the percent of instances running one of your last three versions. You know it. You love it. Give it up for adoption rate. Mario, let's get the polls up. Let's see who's going to win this round. I know where I'll be casting my vote, folks. Install success rate in the lead, but adoption close on the heels. 44 votes in. We're getting down to the wire here, folks. Forty-eight. We're gonna call it at fifty votes here. Someone's really thinking about it. All right, going once, going twice, and install success rate takes it twenty-nine to twenty. Incredible result. I can't believe it. All of the all of the favorites are going down today. All right, Mario, let's bring up the last round of contestants. It's all the buzz for SaaS developers, but this metric is just as important for on-prem software. It's been kicking around the guts of DevOps teams for almost 20 years. The senior from Dora University Standing six foot eight, 244 pounds. Give it up for the one, the only, mean time to recover. And whether you're an engineer, a PM, a services, sales, or success engineer, nobody likes a slow install. This metric is here to ride its 5644 win against trial conversion rate all the way to the top. Everybody put your hands together for time to install. Marielle. Let's get that poll up. Let's see what people say. I was I was trying to do this dance last night and I literally, I forgot the order that the Macarena goes in. And I, it was, it was, it was, not, it was not my proudest moment, but if anyone, uh, anyone remembers, uh, feel free to dance along. Thank you, Grant. Grant, Grant Miller, everybody, giving us a fantastic dance lesson. Fifty votes in. I think it's time to call this one the winner. Is it? Yes. Mean time to recover. Give it up. All right, and that concludes our voting. Let's have a look at the bracket. 
We've got in the round of four upgrade success rate versus customer instance churn and install success rate versus mean time to recover. Folks, it's gonna be a bloodbath out there. We go now to CEO Grant Miller for commentary. Oh, I'm sorry, folks. It, 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 it occurs to me that I'm hearing reports that Grant Miller can, oh, there he is. Grant, what an incredible, what an incredible. Oh my gosh, this is the best. That was the best Elite Eight I've ever seen. I mean, maybe, you know, I, I don't even understand why anyone would be focused on the NCAA tournaments at this point. I might even have to stop watching basketball altogether. <laughs> yeah, folks. Just watch install metrics madness. I am I am completely blown away here. Uh, to all of you at home who voted, thank you for participating. Mariel, thank you for helping to drive this. Uh, back to you, folks. And then Dex, will we be getting the uh, will we be getting into the final four here at some point? Uh, we could do a final four next week. Yeah. yeah, so we're we're actually um, going to hold the rest of it on on LinkedIn. So keep a, keep your eye out for the right. polls. We'll determine the the who's in the championship and our ultimate winner of of Metric Madness. Yeah, well, we're down to the final four. Very exciting.